Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear. And I am a reader and a writer. And I'm also a bit of a completionist. So I know I've been away for a while. I've watched other channels if, when they've taken some time off that you just don't know what they read during that time period. I don't like that. I'm here on booktube to hear all about the books people have read, even when they haven't been making videos. I still want to know. So the other week I saw somebody ha did a video where they had been gone for a little bit and they did their book reviews in a minute or less. So that is what we're going to do because I have been reading these past months and I want to tell you about the fun books that I've been reading, starting with my April wrap up. I finished The Mimicking of Known Successes by Malka Older. This is a novella space mystery where the main characters are set on Jupiter, but it kind of has some gothic steampunk feel to it. And the two main characters were once in a relationship, and they have to work together to solve a mystery. The Sex by Lauren Grush. This was actually an audiobook for me. I have gotten into listening to nonfiction audiobooks. And this is about the first six female astronauts for NASA. And it goes through their background, what they were doing before, how they decided to apply, and their first missions. Then I read Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This is about a brutal academy where you go to bond with dragons and you can die. And the dragons might kill you if they don't think you're worthy. Mammoths at the Gate by Nevo. This is a continuation of her novella series, The Singing Hills, where you find a cleric, Chi, who is traveling around collecting stories. In this one, Chi comes home and finds that one of her mentors has died. And his long lost granddaughters, who are mammoth riders, one of them is a mammoth rider, are at the gates demanding his body. Ling Hoon by Ai Jing. This was a weird haunting horror story where grief ha plays a big part in it. There's in a community somewhere in Canada that if you are still grieving a loved one, if you buy a house there, your loved one's spirit will come back and you can wrap things up. At least the idea is you'll wrap things up. Grief sometimes doesn't work that way though. Under Lock and Skeleton Key by Gigi Pandian. This is a cozy mystery where the main character, Tempest, is an ex-stage magician. An accident ha happened at her past show, so she's now home trying to cope with the aftermath of that, and her body double shows up dead in her small hometown. And so it's, who did it? Why is she dead? Weaver's Lament by Emma Newman. This is number two in her industrial novella series and it's continuing Charlotte who is hiding her magic her brother who is now a certified sorcerer or magician is in his apprenticeship and some weird things are happening at the mill he works he asks her to come uh, undercover to find out what's happening they think it's a rebellion that somebody has wild magic and she goes and infiltrates on the worker side and finds that conditions in the mills are not what her brother was telling her they were. Cast an Eternity by Michelle Seguera. This is long going in her Chronicles of Atlanta series, something I love. And in this one, Kaylin Nea, who is a cop, basically meets a woman who can see ghosts. While talking with the woman, Nea realizes that she can see them with the old woman. And how does this woman, old woman, have this power that and nobody ever knew about it? The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. Now this was actually a book my mother gave me to read because she really enjoyed it. And it's a mystery-esque. It's like a literary mystery. The main character receives a text from a school friend saying, I need you. Takes her young baby with her and meets up with this friend and two other women to find out that the body that they had hidden as teenagers is about to be revealed and they have to figure out what they're going to do about it. And then to come find out the body that they hidden didn't die the way they thought it did. 
hence the mystery. And then that takes us into May. So in May, I read Thorn Hedge by T. Kingfisher. This is a Sleeping Beauty retelling, reimagining, where Sleeping Beauty is a changeling. And since the beauty is the fairy changeling, she has dangerous powers and doesn't want to conduct herself in a wholesome manner. So the child that had been taken, who is now called Toadling, and was accepted into a fairy place because of the changing that has powers as well, has put the princess under a spell and is making sure she doesn't wake up to cause havoc. And here comes along Helene, who is a cinnamon roll of a knight human being, and things go from there. Provenance by Anne Leckie. This is about a woman who is in a very political family. She was adopted in and is a afraid to show her worth or have her worth proven. Her and her adopted brother fight a lot and she's come to the conclusion that he's going to become the head and she wants to give him some trouble. So she's gone off to break out somebody from jail, somebody who had forged a whole bunch of relics that's important to their society. She wants to find out where these hidden relics are and in the meantime finds that there are some other plots afoot. I actually had a really fun time with this. It was nice to see a broader scope of this universe and it wasn't just one society. I then read Gold Record by Lee Saunders. I actually read this for the self-published and science fiction contest. And in this we are following a synth, which is a synthetic human being who is not exactly immortal but pretty darn close, can live a really long time unless they are killed like a normal human being can be killed. And this is the synth going over their memories of meeting this human guy and working a job with him and how things go sideways and how she has to fix her own mistakes. It's actually a lot of fun, especially if you like space opera romps. I would suggest this one. I then read Translation State by Anne Leckie. This one follows three perspectives and it is more closely tied to erratic space. The first perspective that we follow is a young woman who was a caretaker of her grandmother. And when her grandmother died, the family found out that the grandmother had sold the family name to somebody else. With the caveat that the caretaker granddaughter needed to be taken care of. So the new head of the family suggests she becomes a diplomat and sends her to go solve a hundred year old mystery of what happened to a translator, a missing translator. The translators work for the press care. The other two perspectives is a young man on a space station who is trying to figure out who he is. He's known he was adopted his entire life, but he also knows he's not exactly right. He's not the same as everyone else. He has some weird urges. Another perspective is a Presker translator or somebody who will be. They are considered a juvenile. They're in the early stages of trying to figure out who they're going to be and how it all works. And obviously things crossover. And then Red Can I by Dave Domson. Also read this for the self-published in science fiction contest and newsflash this won. The contest ended in uh, June I while I was on hiatus. So hey, this one won. Yay! Can I follows the story of an ex-soldier, ex-mercenary who's just recently gotten out of prison and is now working security for a academic dig site, archaeology dig site. While there, the camp is attacked and she ends up interacting with the indigenous people that nobody else knew existed. And there are some interesting plays with time here. And then I then read Witch King by Martha Wells. This follows primarily Caius Darren, who is a demon. Now in this fantasy world, there's a society that has a pact with demons that when someone who is newly dead is prepared, the demon can come and inhabit their body and while all the demons in that body, the body essentially can keep living but doesn't age. This is kind of told in two timelines. In the present where Kai has just woken up from finding out he's been imprisoned and realizes he's been betrayed and is trying to make sense of all of that, finds his best friend who was also in prison there and then they go looking for her wife. And then the other timeline is in the past of how this empire society had come through and killed 
the society he was living with and how he helped bring them down and, and set up the new society that betrayed him. It, it actually is more interesting than it seems. It really is. And you get to see a lot of this world. And if you like Murderbot, this is not like Murderbot, but it is a fantastic fantasy world. And then moving on to June. which I participated in the Amazing Readathon and had so much fun. It was my first time and read a lot of books. I read The Terraformers by Annalie Newitz. This is a book where I like the premise more than the execution. It's basically three novellas set on this world talking about how the people that have been set up to terraform and build this world so other people can colonize it have decided that no, they want to live. They don't want to just be a tool. So it's gonna be fighting mega corporations without actually going to war. Then I read A Marvelous Light by Freya Marsk. This is a queer fantasy romance that's historical as well. Robin has just been assigned a task in Homeland. I think it's called Homeland. I don't know the British designations. He's been given a government job and it, it seems a little weird. And the liaison comes and realizes that Robin has no knowledge about magic. And that's not normal. Usually people who work in this office, even if they don't have magic, have connections to the magical world. So then Robin gets cursed and drawn into the bigger plot of the magical world. And him and his love interest have to figure out how to remove the curse. And figure out what's going on. And then read Three Grams of Elsewhere by Andy Geisler, also for the self published science fiction contest. And this was a very interesting one. This follows a geriatric protagonist who has a very strong empathy power, which in this society, a lot of other people have developed empathy, but empathy can also be weaponized. Four people that the main character, BB, once knew are now dead under strange circumstances. The mystery is very much like a subplot and you don't really get a like final conclusion because that's not the focus of the story. The focus is BB. I then read A Restless Truth by Freya Marsk. This is the second in her trilogy. Also queer but now we're following Robin's sister Maud and she meets Violet on a cruise ship. Maud is helping Robin and Robin's love interest. Still don't remember his name for for whatever reason reason? Edwin. His name is Edwin. Samad is helping, yeah. Samad is helping Robin and Edwin with what they've decided to do at the end of the first book. And, you know, Mon meets her love interest. Then I read Thrill Switch by Tim Hawken. And this one I would say is a kind of like a cyberpunk sci-fi mystery. You have a detective who refuses to go into the AI avatar world, who is then paired with an FBI agent who basically lives in the avatar world to solve a mystery of deaths that are happening inside the avatar world and in real life. I then reread All Systems Read by Martha Wells. I needed something short with all the reading I was behind on, you know, The Amazing Race, and I love me some Murderbot. This is about a sentient robot who has gained control of itself and is hiding it from its current contract. Editor here. I forgot to talk about A Power Unbound, which was the third and final book in the trilogy by Freya Marsk. I gotta say, I love how this fantasy story wrapped up. And then this romance is male male again between a lord character you meet in the very first book and a completely new character you meet in the second book. It was a lot of fun. If Freya Mars wanted just to write straight fantasy and not have romance, I would still read her books because how unique her magic system was and how everything wrapped up. I'm really wanting to know more even about just even this world, but I, I'm up for anything that she writes fantasy-wise. I then read Spy Family Volume 11, Tatsuya Endo, and I know it was continuing the hijinks of Anya becoming friends with Damien and whatnot. I don't remember a lot from this. And then I read Comey Can't Communicate, volume 10, 11, and 12. The basic premise of Comey Can't Communicate, Comey has a communication disorder that makes it very hard for her to talk to people. 
and one of her new classmates has figured this out, and she tells him that she wants to make a hundred friends before leaving high school, so he's helping her. So this is just continuing those connections and deepening some existing friendships. I then read Rose House by Arcady Martine. This one was atmospheric and weird. An architect built a house called Rose House that is completely 100% controlled by an AI. And then when he died, he left the house to his protege. The house contacts the local sheriff's office to report that there's a dead body, but it's not the protege. And so Maritza, who's a detective with that agency, has a mystery to solve. But really, you're going into this for more of the atmospheric greed and the fact that you have an AI haunting a house versus a ghost. I then reread Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. Gideon is cajoled, kind of forced into going with Hera Huck, her reverend mother of the planet that she lives with, to another planet to learn how to become a necromancer, or a better necromancer. This is a, a society of necromancers in space. And while there, they uncover secrets that most of the houses have not known about, and some unusual ways to use necromancy. And then I went on to Harrow the Ninth, which was a first time read for me. Following Harrowhawk after the events in the first book, and everyone had told me that this is written extremely differently than Gideon the Ninth. Gideon's more like adventure, let's go for mystery kind of thing, and this is more psychological, as Harrow is has hidden things from herself while figuring out more of the plot. She is only half a lector and is trying to figure out so much more. There's no good way to explain this book without just spoiling it. You have to be along for the ride. Once you get to the end, you understand what has been happening. I then reread Skip Beak, volume one through three. This is about a young girl who gets spurned by the man she loves and decides that she's going to take revenge. And because he's in show business, she's also going to beca- go into show business and begins to learn that she is worth something without the guy and that she really enjoys acting. And that has taken us to July. So in July, I read Homegoing by Yaa Jiasi. I read this with Margaret Pernard and Katia. I forget her channel. I'm going to link our discussion down below, which we had on Margaret Pernard's channel. This is a historical fiction where we are following two family lines. It's it's two half-sisters who don't know about one another. And one marries a white man who is in charge of the slave trade, and the other one gets sold as a slave. So we follow the generations of each one. I think we're like four or five down, where they are having different events happen to them, You kind of see how slavery and dealing with white people, African history that's going on, and then American history that's going on, how it affects a family and connections of a family or not having those connections and what it means when you don't know who you are or where you come from. I then read The Adventures of Amina al-Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. This follows a 40-year-old ex-pirate who gets blackmailed into looking for the daughter of a past crewmate, and does have a fantastical journey. I then read the first two volumes of Dinosaur Sanctuary, and this is by Itaro Kinoshita, and this is an extremely just cozy, heartwarming story where Suzumi has started working at a dinosaur zoo, basically. The premise is they found dinosaurs alive, her dad had helped isolate di- like DNA strands to cr- bring back other extinct dinosaurs and now as an adult she's wanting to help take care of them and learn more about them and it's extremely cute and if you really like dinosaurs in between the manga chapters there is actually information from somebody who studies dinosaurs so it does have an educational purpose as well i then read Orin Host Club Volume 2. This is following Haruhi as she has been co-opted into a male host club at her school and just the hijinks they get into. It's just a fun cozy series. And then I started going into reread mode for a lot of things because 
the creative project that I've been working on with my husband, his children's book, which will be published on the 1st of October, was needing more focus. So I still need to read. That's just part of my brain. But I needed something that wasn't new. I re reread The Blue Sword by Robin McKinley. This is about a young woman named Harry who, on the death of her father, is sent to live with her brother in this new world. It's very British Empire, Indian-esque kind of thing. While there, she ends up getting kidnapped by Corlath, who is the king. This is dual perspective. She isn't actually too mad about being kidnapped because she never felt like she belonged where she was, and she finds that she does belong in this society. I then read Comey Can't Communicate, volumes 13, 14, and 15. Again, continuing those friendships, and that is how I started August. Then I read The Hero in the Crown for Draconathon, because there's a dragon that's Aaron. All right, this is by Robin McKinley. This is kind of like a sister book to the Blue Sword. It's a, they're both standalones, but they're set in the same world of Damar. Aaron is a princess from the second queen, the only child of the king. However, she's not going to be the ruler. And she's trying to find her place in society and becomes a dragon hunter. And then I read Ancillary Justice by Anne Leckie. This follows Breck, who was once the Justice of Torin, which was a sentient AI ship. And she wants revenge on Anna, on Anna Ander Mianai, who is the ruler of the Radic Empire. Radic Empire. This is basically a revenge story, but I really enjoy it. And then it continued on with that trilogy and read Ancillary Sword and Ancillary Mercy. Ancillary Sword and Mercy are not revenge driven where she wants to kill Anna and her Mianai. Instead, she decides to go look for uh, the sister of someone in her past, goes to that, si goes to that system, and uh, basically not necessarily causes havoc. It, I mean, it's havoc to those who have been at long time in power and didn't want those you know, power elements to change, but she, she begins to make things better and fair for everybody and find a place for herself and also realize that there are other people who truly do care about her. I then reread Terrier by Tamora Pierce. This follows Rebecca Cooper. This is the first book in a trilogy where she has just become basically a cop in the lower city. They call them dogs and she stumbles upon two mysteries she has some unique magic that help her get information and with her training officers goes off to solve them. I then read volumes three and four of Dinosaur Sanctuary. Again, just continuing that nice cozy, let's take care of dinosaurs and find out more about them. It's great. I'm very, very excited for this series. And then to finish off August, I read Sphere by Michael Crichton. Not my first Michael Crichton book, but I don't think I... But I don't think I actually understood what I was getting into with this one. My husband got very excited when he saw me reading it. This book is about a psychologist who normally works with airplane crashes, emergencies, gets called to what he thinks is one, goes out to the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and then finds out there is a mysterious spaceship in the water that has been discovered. And a crew has been assembled, and he is called because he had once written a paper about first contact for the government. He is added to the crew and they go down underneath the water to enter this spaceship. It, so in some parts it's sci-fi, in some parts it's horror, in some parts it's just cerebral. I don't know how to describe this, but I am curious in watching the movie that was made about it. So then that finishes my wrap up and we will see how long this is and how well I did with describing these books in a minute or less. If you have watched all the way to the end, go ahead and leave me a book stack emoji. Just let me know that you were here because this was definitely a lot of books for what, four or five months of reading that I hadn't been able to catch you guys up on. Thank you and have a great day.